Hey everybody, this is Nathan Reitnauer, head of Wide Blue Sound. Thanks for being here. Today I'm going to run through the long, exciting list of features in Elysium. I'm going to try to keep it brief with a little bit of explaining, a little bit of listening, and hopefully by the end of this video you'll understand the features in Elysium and you'll understand just how powerful Elysium can be. So first I want to say the whole point of Elysium is to make a synth with super modern and high quality sounds and instead of just playing back those samples and combining them like most instruments putting them through a engine that really makes them move and evolve and get cool new sounds that are musical and always usable and to do it with the most fun and intuitive ui possible we worked on elysium for 17 months and most of it was getting the engine and the ui just right so that things just flow. So let's jump right in. So here's the init patch that loads when Elysium starts up. Pretty simple, good starting point. So first I'll flip through the pages really quick so you have an overview, then I'll go back through and explain everything in detail. So you have three main pages, main, effects, and motion, and a sound browser. On the main page, you have a perk layer, a synth layer, and a phase sequencer that controls both of these layers. On the perk layer, you can have one, two, or three sounds combined, and you can change their octave and volume. And on the synth layer, you can have up to four different sounds. And the way these sounds play back is highly determined by the Pulse Chop Flow engine which will transform these pad sounds into more of a pulse rhythm or a chop or a flowing evolving pad. And we'll get into this. And you can choose which of these four sounds plays when with the phase sequencer here. So you can see it'll play channel one, two, three, then four. You can have muted steps or random steps. And with the perk layer, you can choose if you want all three sounds to play assuming you have morph and bass sounds selected at all. Or if you only want one of these sounds to play for each step, or a random sound, or a rest. You also have accents, pitches, and actions per each step. And we'll get more into that. I'll show you some examples. If you click any of these five sound source names, you'll pull up the sound browser. The effects page lets you create entire effects chains for the perk layer, the synth layer, and the master, which is essentially group effects for the two layers. You have seven different effects rows, most with a host of different effects per row, and many presets per effect. At the bottom, you can solo the layer to hear it more easily change the volume of the layer, or generate a new effects chain. Generating an effect uses only the presets for the effects, so you're guaranteed to get a good result. The master effects also includes a compressor and a tape limiter. The motion page includes an all new global tide module that lets you raise and fall volume over a few beats or a few bars. And six motion sequencers that let you draw or generate sequences which you can use to modulate any of the parameters on the entire synth. There are over 130 different parameters that you can modulate, including everything on the main page and all of your effects. You can even change the sound that's on your morph and bass layers per step, which is a super cool sound. All right, so now that you know the basics, let's jump into some of the cool tricks you can do, and I'll show you some sounds as well. All right, so here's a preset that focuses on the perk layer only. So 
So we have the main karimba sound. And two more sounds layered in, one on the morph knob, one on the bass knob. You can change the octave of the sound here, the volume of the sound here, filter all three sounds here, and change the length. knob specializes in sounds that have a lot of low frequency content, but they sound good across the whole range. The filters are pretty self-explanatory. You have a low cut, high cut, and you can change the slope of each filter by clicking on the number. So if you want something that's very transparent, use 6. If you want something that sounds like a filter, use 24. You know what pitch does. Analog, spread, and flux are cool ways to easily add motion between each hit. And to show this off, I'll load a patch from Rhythmic Elements. All right, so you can really see a massive difference here. And each of these knobs are doing several things, but we fine-tuned them to make them super easy to use. All right, now I'll load up a patch to show off the synth layer. So right off the bat, you'll notice this moving knob. That means it's being modulated from the motion page. This patch is using three channels, which again is being sequenced down below. The first two channels use the same sound source with slightly different volumes, panning on one of them, slightly different filters, and the tone of the filter is boosted on channel two. They also use different filter types. The default filter is the smooth low pass, where you can crank the resonance as much as you want without itself oscillating. If you want something a little more aggressive, with 12 dB of drive, use the French filters. The rest of the filters are a little more unique, but I highly encourage you to play with them. Some of them are custom made for Elysium, and there's more details about them in the manual. Now to show you the difference between pulse chop and flow, I'll just switch them on this patch and see what happens. <laughs> Now that sounds pretty cool. I'll show you the depth knob now. Now as I pull the depth knob down, listen as it turns into a pad. Now with any of these modes, when depth is at zero, it will just play these sound sources back without running them through the engine. 
as I turn the depth to 100, it's only playing what's going through the engine. So you always have a pad that you can blend in. Now we know in modern production you want to filter the pads as much as possible so they don't take up too much space in the mix. So what we've done is made it so that you can choose which of these channels actually gets sent to the pad and then you can filter them. So say we only wanted the Elysium strings in the pad. We can turn off 1 and 2. You see 4 is disabled because we don't have a sound source in channel 4. And I'll pull this down just so we can hear it. Mm, that's nice. So let's say we just want to keep more of the low frequencies. Fade that in. Volume compensate. Now when you use the same sound for your pad as your main pulse, you get a unique sense of coherency in your sound that you can only get in Elysium. The pulse chop and flow modes each have a special knob to help change the shape of the rhythm that they're imparting on the sound. Pulse has punch. And blur is special. It basically determines how many steps each sound lasts for once it's triggered. So as you get up to 12 steps, you're getting very long evolving pads and it sounds really nice and subtle and ambient. And as it gets shorter, they start evolving faster. And on flow mode, you can also change the pad attack and release, and you can even detune it a bit if you want more of an analog sound. You have the same filters here as on the perk section, and of course, level. If you want to turn on and off the channels, use the moons. You can command click on Mac or control click on Windows to solo a channel. And here you can swap and clone any of the channels. So maybe you have a cool sound on channel one, you want to clone it to the other three and then make slight variations that get triggered. I'll load up a new patch to show you the phase sequencer. All right, so this is a pretty cool sequence. I know some of you right away are saying, I don't know if I want pitches in my presets, and that's totally fine. You don't need to. All you have to do is clear the pitches here, and if they're already cleared, you can lock the pitch so that as you change presets, no pitches will ever be loaded. Also, the only presets that are pitched are in this folder here, ARPS pitched, and we have unpitched versions of all those as well. We've been extra careful not to force any melodic information on people who don't want it. So the per player is going at 16th notes. He's doing this cool rhythm here. And the synth is doing eighth notes. It's pretty basic, one, two, three, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, two, one, two, three, four with a slight swing. And 
of course, you can turn off the phase sequencer at any time for either layer if you just want to play back samples by yourself. All right, that's just using an arpeggiator. Or you can just play it back on your keyboard normally. But the phase sequencer is very powerful. Each of these four sequencers have a operations dropdown. You can shift the pattern left and right. You can repeat the first two, four, or eight steps. You can randomize them. Or you can randomize this plus the accents phase sequencer plus the actions phase sequencer to get some really cool results. And of course, they're not totally random. We've algorithmically developed them so that they never sound too crazy. They're still within musical realms and there's still a ton of variety there, but you know, but we wanted to make sure that Elysium was extremely musical. And that means that generally it should always sound good. We have a few accents here. You have five or six levels of accent pitch self-explanatory. You can go up or down 24 and pitch has a pretty unique set of functions. You can clear the pitches as I showed you. You can repeat the first four pitches. You can quantize the pitches to various scales. You can do a sweep. You can limit them to plus 12 and negative 12, which may be cool here. All right. Transpose, and you can randomize. So let's say we quantize it to pentatonic minor. Let me reload this quick. Actually, I'll just load a new patch. So the actions are probably my favorite part of the phase sequencer. You can do obviously no action. You can do double and triple hits. You could do quiet versions of those because often as you're stacking sounds, it gets louder. So the quiet can help you compensate for that. You can tighten the sounds like you see here, or you can fade them in. All right. So the perk layer here is a good example of double hits. Oh yeah, you can hear the glide on there. It sounds pretty cool. And the synth is a great example of the tighten and fade in sounds. And all of the tighten and fade commands are tuned to be relative to how tight the sounds already are. So wherever your punch and length are, it will tighten the sound relative to that. So it should always sound good. Then we have sequencer link, where any change you make to one layer will affect the other as well. Pretty useful. Because a lot of times the changes you'll make to one layer, you'll also want to have on another layer to create that kind of cohesion. And then also, we have a rhythm lock which will lock everything on the phase sequencer and everything in the pulse chop flow engine as you change presets. So if you get a cool rhythm that you like, then you can save it and then just load up a bunch of other presets and run it through. Down here we have mono, glide, and force legato. Input quantize, which is great when you're playing in rhythmic parts. And split, which will split the perk and the synth layer so that you can play them individually. Maybe you want the bass perk on the left and the synth pads or whatever on the right. And you can even MIDI learn the split note. So if you're on the keyboard already, you can click this. It's waiting for your input. 
boom. Now I'll quickly touch on the sound browser. There are tons of sounds for the perk layer and the synth layer, and you can choose all the sounds from this one window. You can preview all your perk sounds and their entire range and all the synth sounds all from this window. And it'll show you what sound is currently being played here. So if you know you want a bass sound, go ahead and click the left side of all these sounds. That's got some nice low end. And then let's try to, let's load up some, oh, that sounds nice. All right, so now we kind of have our patch ready to go already. Now, if you want to filter the sounds a little more, you can use these mood tags. You can add multiple by holding command. And you can also negate sounds by using the minus sign. And of course, if you know you want a certain sound source or a certain type of instrument, you can go here, maybe click keys, and now we have six streamy keys to pick from. All right, and the same goes for the synth layer. If you hold your mouse down, it'll keep playing until you release your mouse. My favorite feature, even more than the full range preview, has got to be the generate function. So you can choose a mood tag if you'd like and have Elysium pick sounds for you based on those tags. So as you can see, there's infinite ways to generate new sounds. Now I haven't even showed you the effects yet. So these two buttons will generate entire effects chains for the perk layer and the synth layer. And you can go into the effects page and edit them afterwards. But here, if you just want to generate new sounds quickly, this is the best place to do it. So let's try that.
cool. And then when you're done, you just hit apply. But if you experiment and you don't like what you came up with, just hit the cancel button and it will revert to what you had when you first opened the sound browser, including anything you generated, including the effects. So feel free to go crazy here. Now we have our new patch. And these are the effects that we just generated. The perk effects button generated this. The synth effects button generated this. Now, moving on to the effects page, you can also generate the chains using this dice button. It does the same exact thing as it does in the sound browser. It's just easy for you to reach here. That's cool. Now, just as we saw earlier, there's an effects lock button that's very cool. You can lock it, again, change your snapshots, your presets as many times as you want, and your effects pages will stay exactly the same. So if you know you want a distorted sound or a clean sound with no stomps and amps, you can lock the effects here. And once again, all 300 presets turn into something brand new. And just to give you a quick run through of everything that's available, you have the shaper, which can help you shape transients, and you have a lo fi knob here to give you some of that bit crushing sound. And let me show you something. A stomp box with a bunch of different pedals. Of different amp models. An SSL style EQ. of different modulate effects with even more presets. These can sound very cool. I think these are my favorite effects in this row. We have different types of delays. With ping pong here. Even a saturated delay. And then we have a convolution reverb and four algorithmic reverbs. The convolution reverb is pretty spectacular. You have all your reverb groups here, and then the actual effect within those groups here. So you choose a group first. Uh, let's say we want the famed Procasti M7, and then we have all these impulse responses from that. room is especially good on shorter sounds. Make sure my reverb's off here. I 
exercise, high cut and low cut. So you can get some cool sound design right away. The synth page is the exact same as the perk page. And then the master has a compressor added, a shaper, stomps, if you want to add some saturation on the bus. Uh, the same reverb module and a special tape limiter. You can turn on tape, add drive and warmth, which will change the tonal balance of your entire patch, which is nice. Low cut, high cut, and a gain to push into the limiter. Output is set to negative 0.3. You should probably leave it there. That ensures that your patch will never clip and sound bad because that's not the kind of clipping that you want. And this limiter sounds quite transparent, actually. You won't even notice it's on. Now, the motion page. You can do so many cool things here. A lot of the patches in Elysium abuse the heck out of this page. Let me load up a new patch to show you how this works. So on this patch, you can hear how the synth goes up for a couple beats in volume, then slowly dips out over three bars. I turned it up just to exaggerate it for you so you could clearly hear it. This slider is just the amount that this is imparted on the sound. Now you can choose how long you want the rise and fall to be, and you can choose the slope as well. And you can even do really quick LFO style effects. Ah, well, you want loop on. If loop is off, it kind of acts as an envelope. But with it on, it'll act like an LFO. And that's why this thing is so versatile. So you can hear those long swells up and down really add a sense of movement and kind of a cinematic vibe to the sound. And it keeps things interesting over time as well. And you remember like the whole point of adding movement and motion and evolution to your patch is to keep your listener cued in and interested. You know, part of the reason why we like analog gear more than digital gear is because Analog gear slowly evolves over time. There's slight micro movements and the temperature in the circuitry gets warmer and things start acting differently. And there's a whole system in there of things moving. And the problem with digital is that it's hard to create that generally. And a lot of synthesizers sound really static. And so that's why we're so excited by this concept of having so many different ways to add movement and evolution that goes way beyond what traditional analog synthesizers were able to do. And so in that sense, this is kind of a fully realized version of the things that make us love analog. And so it's kind of an evolution in that way. So the last thing I wanna to get to is the motion sequencers. You have six sequencers here. You can draw on any of them whether they're on or off, or you can generate patterns. Ramp up, down, sign. We know that when you're in the middle of making music, you don't always want to be fiddling with drawing new patterns, and sometimes it's more fun to get inspiration. So there's a lot of ways to do that here. Once you've generated something, you can process it in one of a bunch of ways. So let's say we randomize something. Okay, well, maybe you want to soften it. Maybe you know you want to modulate the cutoff from here 
to here and you want a straight line. So we have a function for that, draw a line, boom. And then from there you can move things up or down or you can change the amount that it's affecting its destination here. You can change the rate at which it scrolls through steps and you can change how many steps up to 128. You can see here that since we randomized it, you know, you have all this extra data in here now. You could even use it as an LFO if you'd like. Uh, some of our sound designers definitely did that. But if you're just trying to do something, like draw a rhythmic pattern, you can draw the first four steps and then repeat the first four steps and then make variations from there. You can even make it an eight bar pattern by doing this and have a variation at the very end so that you didn't have to sort through a long list. So it's pretty simple. You have the perk channel, the synth channels, which is, you know, channel one through four, and it only shows you the channels that are enabled in the current patch. The synth master, which is basically the pulse chop flow engine. And we also have pan here. The phase sequencer, which is the swing and the number of steps if you want to do something kind of polyrhythmic. And the three effects pages. So any effects that are enabled on those pages will show up here. And again, you have your perk and synth volumes in the corner here for quick access. Those are just changing the level knobs here on the main page. So you don't have to worry about messing up your gain staging. The knobs here and the volume knobs here are all controlling the same knob and that's pre effects lastly if you need the manual you can click this i and then there's a link to the manual down here also we have tool tips for every parameter if you just make sure your info pane is on you'll see at the bottom of the screen here there are tool tips for everything so if you're on flare and you want to know what voices does it will tell you right there. So you get to learn a whole bunch of new effects as well. It's, it's actually pretty great. And keep in mind, even though Elysium can do all these cool sequencing things with the phase sequencer, you don't need to use it if you don't want to. You can just turn it off and just play things on your keyboard. <laughs> So no matter how you want to play Elysium, you have tons of amazing sounds at your fingertips just waiting for you to discover. If you guys have any questions, comment below. We also have a few tips and tricks videos planned, things that we learned designing all the presets for Elysium. There's some really cool things you can do with all these new features. We keep the video short and sweet. This one was a little longer because there was just so much to go through. And uh, go to whybluesound.com. We have some crazy music demos a cool trailer, and a bunch of stuff for you to check out. And we have a live chat. Come chat with us. But yeah, hope you enjoyed, and have a good morning, afternoon, or night, wherever you are.